In this video, we're going to briefly recall summation notation and then talk about some of the formulas used to compute area under curves. So first, recall the following notation. So there is a Greek letter. It looks like this, so something like this. And it's called sigma. Okay, And so sometimes we put a little i here. And this is equal to 1. And then we go to n. And here we have a sub i. And so how this works is you start at the number here at the bottom. You start at 1. So you plug in 1. And this symbol, when you see it, it means you, you add. So plus. Then you plug in 2. And then again, you add. So plus. And then you plug in 3. And then you add, etc. And you keep adding. And the very last number you plug in is the top number, so n. So a sub n. So this is called summation notation. Um, several of these things have names. So i here is called the index of summation. Index of summation. Typically, people like to use uh, i, j, and k for the index. a sub i, a sub i is called the ith term. Ith term. So a sub 1 would be the first term. a sub 2 would be the second term. a sub 3 would be the third term. a sub n would be the nth term. The numbers 1 and n, these are called the bounds. So bounds, bounds of the summation are just the bounds. 1 is the lower bound and n is the upper bound. So there are some formulas. But before we look at the formulas, let me just do a simple example over here um, of how the summation notation works. So say we had the sum as i runs from 1 to 3 of 2i, of 2i. So in this case, the first number you would plug in is 1. Right? So you'd plug in the 1 for the i, so you'd get 2 times 1. And the symbol means you add, and then you plug in 2, so 2 times 2. And the symbol means you add, so then you plug in 3, so you get 2 times 3. And you stop at 3. 3 is the upper bound, right? and 1 is the lower bound. So this would be 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6. So you get 2 plus 4, which is 6, 6 plus 6 is equal to 12. So this summation is equal to 12. Now, in our area problems, what's going to happen is we're not going to have a number here usually. We're going to have a variable like n. And so we'll need to somehow resolve these sums, right? We'll need to get rid of the summation notation in order to take a limit. So the following formulas are very, very useful and are totally worth uh, memorizing for that purpose. So formulas, formulas. So the first formula uh, that we'll, we'll have is if you have a constant being added over and over again. So the finite sum as i runs from 1 to n of c. So when you plug in 1 here, you get nothing. You just get c. So it's c. And then you add again, so you just get c again. And then you add, and then you just get c. And you just get c every time you plug in the number. The last number you plug in is n, and you get c. So you have n copies of c, right? There's, there's n of them. There's n copies of c. So you just get n times c. If that doesn't make sense, think of a simpler example. Say you had 2 plus 2 plus 2. You have 3 copies of 2. That's 3 times 2, so it's 6. If you have 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, you have 4 copies of 2, so it's 4 times 2, so you get 8, etc. So here we have n copies of c, so it's nc. 2. Another useful formula is when you have the sum as i runs from 1 to n of i. And this is equal to n, n plus 1, all over 2. Right? Very, very, very useful formula. Very, very useful. 3. You have the sum as i runs from 1 to n of i squared. This one's a little bit harder to remember. Um, it's n, n plus 1. That part's easy. And the weird part is that it has a 2n plus 1, and it's all divided by 6. 
So this one takes the most effort to memorize. And the very last one, there's a little trick to memorize it. It's the sum as i runs from 1 to n of i cubed. And the way I memorize it is you just square this one. So you square the n, you square the m plus 1, and then you square the 2 so you get 4. So these are the formulas that we'll need for area. Um, let's go ahead and do a simple example of using these formulas. So ex means example. Let's compute the sum as i runs from 1 to, I don't know, 5. No, to 50. To 50. Let's be, let's be bold. <laughs> uh, and let's do um, 2i plus i squared. Okay, 2i plus i squared. So to do this sum, what we typically do is we break it up, right? Properties of sums say we can break it up. So basically, you can pull out anything that doesn't have an i. So you can write this as 2 finite sum i runs from 1 to 50 of i. Okay, that's, that's this piece here, right? That's this piece here. So basically, we took this piece and we pulled out the 2 plus, and then we have i squared and i runs from 1 to 50. So we have 2i plus i squared. We, did, we have the same thing down here, except we pulled out the 2, and we broke them up because there's a plus sign. And so now we just use the formulas. So it's 2. So this first piece here, this piece right here, that's the formula. I'll write it again over here because you can't see it. It's i equals 1 to n, and then it's uh, n m plus 1 over 2. So in this case, our n is 50. So it's just 50, 50 plus 1, all over 2, plus. And the other formula is still up here. This is the other one for i squared. So again, this whole thing becomes this piece here. And then you just plug in your n, n is 50. So it's 50, 50 plus 1. And then 2 times 50 plus 1, all over 6. And this is the part where you have to go to a calculator. So I'm going to go ahead and, and type this in. Um, to make it easy for me, I'm going to cancel these twos. That should make it a little bit easier. So it's 50 times 51. That's the first piece. So the first piece is equal to 2550. So 2550 plus, now I'm going to type in this piece into my calculator. So that's going to be 50 times 51 times, and the, the second piece here is uh, 101, right? This piece here is 101, and this piece here is 51. So I'm going to type that in, 50 times 51 times 101, and that's all divided by 6. So I got 42925, wow, big numbers, so 42925. Then you add these numbers up, so plus 2550, so you get 45475, so 45475. And that's the final answer. That's it.